Well, hello everyone, my name is Wigo and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be jumping once again into Pokemon Radical Red. For the people that don't know what Radical Red is, it's basically just a very competitive ROM hack where you actually have to EV train your team in order to win. And the last time that I played this game, it didn't really go well for me. But I have been playing and analyzing the game a lot more and I think I'm ready for an actual rerun. I'll be playing through Pokemon Radical Red with water types. The reason why I picked water types is definitely not because I could just use my boy Swampert then. But hey, who doesn't love playing with his favorite Pokemon? Since we have the water type, we will be having a very wide variety of Pokemon to choose from. We can even go with the thickest boy of them all, Waylord. Before we get into the video, let's try to smash 5 thousand likes for this attempt on Radical Red and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already and with that out of the way let's just jump right into it. I decided to name myself Aquaman for obvious reasons and then name my rival Thor because you know electric kills water types and he's going to be one of the hardest opponents for us to take down. I then went ahead and picked up my starter Squirtle of course and our rival is going to have Bulbasaur. After winning our first rival fight and picking up our special set of balls from Professor Oak, I decided to capture some more team members. Starting off with the Finian, which is probably not going to get used too much, but it's something that we have for the start of the game. Also a Tentacool, which we're going to be naming a cool tent. Then I'll also be getting a Chinchou, which is going to be one of the most useful Pokemon throughout this entire run because it gets Volt Absorb. And if I think I'm going to get hit with an electric type move, I can just switch in my Chinchou or Lantern. I then also capture a Slowpoke and decide to go to Viridian Forest to take on our rival Brendan. And since he only has two Pokemon, Corfish and Trico, this was pretty easy for me. We only lost our Squirtle to his Trico and then Tentacool could come in and finish him off. After this rival battle, I immediately went to Thor and took him on as well. But he was even easier. Angie was able to take down his Starly and then I would switch in Tentacle to take down his second Pokemon Bulbasaur to win another rival battle. With that, we can now move on to Pewter City, but we first capture a Psyduck, a Goldeen, and a Wingle. Wingle is going to be very nice if he gets Drizzle as he evolves into Prelipur. But before we take on Brock, we actually have to take on Faulkner down at the museum. He starts off with a Wingle, so I decide to lead off with Tentacle, and this is the stupidest thing I could have ever done. I decided to set up two Toxic Spikes layers, even though his team is fully flying, so they don't even affect his team. Besides that amazing big brain play though, this was an easy battle for me to win, taking down Wingle with Tentacle, Emolga with my Xinchao, and then last up, Corvusquire with Psyduck. After this, it's time for our first gym badge, and that is Brock. He starts off with an Alolan Geodude as I lead off with my Slowpoke. I go for a Water Gun and he goes for a Spark. I predicted another one so switched into Chinchou. After predicting correctly I took it down and he then switched in his Vulpix. So I went into Tentacool and Water Gunned him. But he read that and switched into his Onyx, went for a Bulldoze and took down my Tentacool. So I then switched in Pico and took down the remaining of his team with Water Pulses, gaining ourselves our first Gym Badge and access to Mount Moon, but before we get there, our Squirtle evolved into a War Turtle. I also bought myself a Magikarp, because Gyarados is super good and there would be no reason to not use him in this playthrough. And in Mount Moon, I also captured a Timpole. At the end of Mount Moon, we had to deal with Team Rocket, more specifically Archer. But this was, again, a very easy battle, because I decided to paralyze his last Pokemon, my Hiena, and then just confuse him and he hit himself in his confusion too many times to count, and that was basically my way of winning. After defeating Archer though, I went ahead and got myself the Macho Brace, which is going to be amazing for our EV training. And speaking of EV training, that's exactly what I did after I got this Macho Brace. I took on a lot of Yanmas to get some speed EVs and make all my boys a lot faster. Magikarp also evolved into Gyarados, and after all this training, I could finally take on Thor once again. He lit off with a Curlia, so I lit off with Tentacle, but as I went for a Sludge, he switched into his Ivysaur. So I then got hit with a Sleep Powder, but I woke up pretty quickly and hit it with an Acid Spray, which lowered its special defense. After that, I went down to a Bullet Seed, and I switched in Fast Poke, who got put to sleep once again and also immediately destroyed by Bullet Seed. So I tried Gyarados, but once again the same happened. Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, Bullet Seed. 
and Gyarados was down. So I went into War Turtle, and guess what? The same happened again. Got put to sleep, Leech Seed, Bullet Seed, dead. So I went to the Palpitoad this time. And he missed his Leech Seed, so my Palpitoad could take him down with two Mud Shots. Then Curlia came out, which I killed with some Bubble Beams, and then his last two Pokemon, Staravia and Rockruff, went down to Bubble Beams as well. Before we went to Bill's house, I took on Buxy too. But she was pretty easy to take down, Ariados went down to my War Turtle and the last two Pokemon, Ledian and Scyther, got taken care of by Gyarados. And immediately after, I just went to Misty's gym and since we are the superior water type trainer here, we're easily going to come out on top. Chinchao was able to paralyze the Floatzel after Frogadier flip turned into it and then I was able to hit a Shockwave as well before he flip turned into Starmie, which I hit with another Shockwave. I then went into War Turtle to try and bite it to death, but that really didn't work out so well, so I went down, went into Palpitoad, hit two Mud Shots before also going down, but this did lower Starmie's speed, which meant that a Gyarados could come in and finish it off. She then went into Frogadier, and since I knew that this thing had Rock Tomb, I went into Slowpoke. He was able to put it to sleep though, then I switched in Chinchow. As my Slowpoke went down, I confused the Frogadier and managed to take it out with some Shockwaves and Bubble Beams. The last Pokemon was Floatzel, which I took down with one more Shockwave, and that means that we now have two Gym Badges. Shortly after, my Chinchow evolved into a Lantern. Before we go to the SSN and also the Gym, we have to take on Brendan again. But this was probably one of the easiest fights since my Gyarados could take care of the Grovile, the Lunatone, the Loudrit, but not the Corfish. The Corfish took down my Big Water Schneck. So Lantern had to come in and finish it off before we could go to the SSN to pick up the HM for Cut and then go to the Gym to take on Lieutenant Surge. And with a water type team, this is not going to be too easy. Then I got a Shellos in Diglett's cave. Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense to me either, but it happened. My Tentacool evolved into a Tentacruel. I also decided to add Gastrodon to the team, even though Lieutenant Surge has a lot of grass type moves on most of his Pokemon, but it's probably still going to be able to take a hit. And so the battle started off with his Pinchurchin, who'd set up the electric terrain against my Tentacruel. My Tentacruel was able to hit two Scalds on the Pinchurchin, but it wasn't enough to take it down as we went down ourselves to some Discharges. I then went into my Palpitoad as he switched out his Pinchurchin for Vikavolt, but I went for a Muddy Water and got some Chip Damage in. I then predicted that it would go for an Energy Ball as I went into Gyarados. I went for one Aqua Tail, but it wasn't enough to take it down, and we got destroyed by Volt Switch. So with the Volt Switch, he went into Pinchurchin and I went back into Palpitoad, went for the Muddy Water, took it down, and then also took down the Vika Volt with Muddy Water. After this, he went into Benectric and I thought it was going to go for Hidden Power Grass here, so I switched in Slowpoke. That's exactly what he did. My Slowpoke, sadly enough, went down after the second Hidden Power here. So I switched in Lantern to confuse the Manectric and hit it with some Bubble Beams before he switched out into Raichu. The Raichu easily took care of my Lantern as I then went into Palpitoad, managed to tank a Grass Knot and hit a Bulldoze, taking down Raichu. Then last up was his Manectric once again. We go down, we switch in Gastrodon, tank a Hidden Power Grass like a champ, and win this battle with one more Mud Bomb. That is a third Gym Badge under our belt. Let's go to Rock Tunnel and capture some new Pokemon. I got a Wimpod, a Remoraid, and an Arrokuda. We then went to Lavender Town to talk to this guy, the biggest and most important man in this entire game. For just a small fee of 2,000 Poké Dollars, he will give you some very nice EV training in every single stat that you want. And for a measly 10,000 Poké Dollars, he can give you a full team of Audinos to fight, which give a lot of experience. So you can probably imagine how much time I actually spent at this guy. I probably spent more time in this guy's house than I went out of my house in real life. Because, I mean, who goes outside these days, am I right? Anyway, after a lot of EV training, I decided to go to Erika. Yes, the Grass-type gym, probably not the best matchup for our water types, but let's just jump right into it. She starts off with Rillaboom, and I lead off with Galissapod. Because I just have the move first impression here, and that is, of course, going to one-shot this Rillaboom very quickly. She then went into Meganium, which is a Grass-Fairy type in this game, so I went into Tentacruel. 
I try to go for the acid spray, but she switches into Venusaur, who puts me to sleep with sleep powder and then hits me with an earth power as well. But inevitably, she switches into Pseudo Wudu, which is a grass rock type in this game as well. And since I need my tentacruel for the Meganium, I switch out into my Politoed, which gets destroyed by Woodhammer. So my Swana has to come out, go for some air slashes and some flinches on the Pseudo Wudo to take it down and force out her next Pokemon, Serperior, with Contrary, so if she uses Leaf Storm, she's going to be plus two in special attack. Which is exactly what she does! But I managed to survive one and hit an Air Slash, but she has a Focus Sash, so her Serperior is going to hang on with one HP here. One more Leaf Storm, she's at plus four now, but I go into Galissapod, go for the first impression, and take down the Serperior. She then goes into Meganium again, so I switch in Tentacruel, go for two Acid Sprays very quickly and take that thing down. Her last Pokemon is now going to be Venusaur. So my Tentacruel is going down here, going to Galissapod, hit one first impression before also going down to Giga Drange while the Venusaur is healing up as well. Then I switch in Blastoise and I go for the Icy Wind, but I get one shot by Giga Drain. But because of the speed lowering, my artillery can now come in and finish off this Venusaur with one last attack, gaining ourselves our fourth gym badge, which means that we can move on to the Team Rocket hideout and take on Giovanni. He starts off with his Ditto King, so I start off with my big Swan. One Hydro Pump later, and we easily overpower it. Then it's Honchkrow's time to shine. But this thing has super luck and is holding a scope lens, so it's almost 100% going to have a critical hit on my Pokemon. And I decided to go for Feather Dance, which is probably the stupidest thing I could have done here. So my Swana goes down easily after that. So Octillery has to come in and go for the Ice Beam, but this Honchkrow manages to hang on with like 2 HP. So Octillery goes down as well. So my Blastoise comes in, goes for the Rapid Spin to get some speed as we go into his Mega Kangaskhan. I get hit by the double fake out, but I manage to survive and hit one more skull before going down to power up punch. So I switch in Galissapod and finish off this Kangaskhan with first impression. The next Pokemon is Rodom, so I stay in and try to go for a rock slide, but I get out sped and my emergency exit kicks in after a discharge. So I go into a cool tent, decide to go for some Scalds before he decides to go for a Volt Switch and go into his Infernape, who takes me down with a Thunder Punch. Glissapa then comes in and finishes it off with First Impression. Then last up is Rodom again, so I switch in Politoed and tank a hit like a champ, go for the Scald, get taken out, switching Galissapod again, first impression, and Giovanni is finally down. Before we take on another gym leader, I took on Morty for the Shadow Ball TM, down at Lavender Town, but he was probably one of the easiest fights up until this point. So after getting my TM, I cleared out the entirety of the Pokemon Tower and went to Silphco to take on our rival Thor. He starts off with his Star Raptor, so I decide to lead with my own bird, Swana, but I get destroyed by Brave Bird. Switching my Gyarados, go for the Intimidate, lowering the Star Raptor's attack, which means that we can now survive a Brave Bird and kill it with one more Aqua Fang. He then goes into Azumarill, and my stupid brain decided to go for Dragon Dance for some reason instead of going for some chip damage. And I immediately get punished by a play rough. So I switch in my Lantern, go for two Paracharges, and take down Azumarill. His Venus Earthing came out, so I decided to paralyze him and also confuse him before going down to a Giga Drain, and switching him a Wimpog as I then went for two Swords Dances and a Leech Life before getting switched out by my stupid Emergency Exit ability. So I had to go into Barascuda and I tried to go for a Crunch, but he switched in his Electivire, taking the Crunch very well because it's an electric fighting type in this game. And so I went for an Aqua Jet because I thought that it was going to outspeed me and kill me, but it's for some reason it just kept me alive and switched back into Venusaur after that, which I took down with another Crunch. He then went back into Electivire, which I also took down with an Aqua Jet this time. His last Pokemon was Darmanitan, which immediately got hit by Aqua Jet as well, but he took me out with Flare Blitz, switched in Galissapod, first impression, and we won another rival battle. After this, I also took a Lapras with me from this guy, and since Lapras is a water dragon type in this game, it's going to be very, very useful. A little further in Silphco though, we had to take on two admins together with our rival Brendan, and I'm not gonna lie here, he kind of carried us a little bit. But we still managed to win the fight. After this, it's of course time for one more Giovanni fight, and he's basically just running a ground type team here. 
so this shouldn't be any problem. The battle starts off great with my Swana versus his Hippo down. I go for the Scald and get the burn, but even this burn isn't able to take down this Hippo down in one turn as he sets up some Stealth Rocks. The turn after though, I take him down with one more Scald and he sends an Excadrill. I hit another Scald on this thing, but it has Focus Sash and after that it takes me down with Rock Slide. So I switch in Baroscuda, go for the Aqua Jet and take it down, then Garchomp comes out, I go for two Liquidations and that takes it out because my second one was a critical hit. Otherwise he probably would have swept my entire team because he set up a Swords Dance. He then has a random Poltegeist which I take down with Crunch since it's a Ghost type, and then a Mega Kangaskhan is his last Pokemon. I hit one more Liquidation before going down. And so my Gyarados comes in, hits one more Aqua Fang and also goes down. But Gillisopod's first impression wins me this battle once again. We then took on the equivalent of me in this game because this kid likes Mudkips very much. And if you manage to beat him in a battle, he will give you a Mudkip. So that's exactly what I do. I managed to beat him rather quickly and finally get my own Mudkip. So what do I do with this new Mudkip? I go to my best friend, the EV training guy, and max him out in speed and attack and evolve him into a beautiful Swampert. Before we go further though, what is your favorite water type? Did I use it in this video or is it maybe an underrated water type? Or maybe even a legendary like Kyogre? So let me know in the comments down below and let's jump into the next battle with Sabrina. I decide to lead off with Swampert and Gyarados against their Hatterene and Indeedee. I double up with Iron Head and Iron Tail on the Hatterene and manage to take it out on turn 1. Which means that they won't be able to set up a Trick Room. They then send out their Crawdont and I get hit with an Expanding Force. I hit a Crunch and a Brick Break before getting taken out by another Expanding Force. So then I go into Blastoise and Barascuda to take down their Pokemon with Brick Break and Scald. The next two Pokemon are Conkeldur and a Porygon 2. They managed to set up a Trick Room, and since the Porygon 2 is very bulky, they managed to survive a Liquidation Scald combo, and the next turn to take out my Barascuda. So I go into my Slowbro and hit a Psychic on the Conkeldur, and my Blastoise gets taken out. The Porygon then teleports out into Gardevoir, as I go into Lapras and my Slowbro takes down this Conkeldur with Psychic and I hit one more Hydro Pump on Gardevoir. The turn after they switch in Porygon 2 and I manage to take out Gardevoir with Shadow Ball and Hydro Pump. And the turn after that my Lapras is going to take out Porygon 2 with Ice Beam which gives us our 5th Gym Badge. On our way to Koga I decided to capture a new Pelipper and this time he did have the Drizzle ability so I'm finally going to have a Rain Setter from now on. But before we go to Koga, we have to take on Brendan again at the Safari Zone. He leads off with Metagross and just decides to go boom on my Mega Swampert and take me out. So I go into Blastoise as he goes into his next Pokemon, Medicham. He hits me with a close combat, but I hang on with 6 HP and then counter with a Hydro Pump taking him down. Crawdon then comes in to take me down with Aqua Jet, so I switch in Barascuda, go for the Brick Break Aqua Jet combo to take down his Crawdon without taking too much damage myself. Next up is Gardevoir, so I go for the Liquidation, get a critical hit and manage to take it out, then Mega Sceptile is up next, I hit one more Aqua Jet before going down for by a Bullet Seed, and then I go into Slowbro which is able to survive a Bullet Seed and hit back with an Ice Beam taking down this Sceptile as he goes into his last Pokemon, Exploud. I of course go down to a Boom Burst here so Gyarados has to sweep up this Exploud with some Aqua Fangs which means that we can now move on to the 6th gym, Koga. He leads off with a Quillfish so I lead off with my Pelipper and set up the Rain immediately. I then switch into my Mega Swampert and go for some Earthquakes to take down the Quillfish because it had a Focus Sash. Next up is the Acelgor, so I go for Liquidation to take that thing out. His Dragapult then comes out, so I go into Gyarados as he U-turns into Toxtricity. I hit one Crunch on the Toxtricity before going down to some Boom Bursts. Then I go into Pico to set up the Rain again, and he goes for a Venoshock and not for an Electric-type move for some reason, so I go for the Hydro Pump and take him down. He then goes into his Greninja, which turns into Ask Greninja after killing my Pelipper, so I go into Swampert and the Earthquake is going to take it out, but then a Dragapult once again comes out. I hit one Iron Tail before sadly enough also going down. He also takes down my Slowbro and my Barascuda even after an Aqua Jet, but the Life Orb damage takes him out. So I go into my Blastoise, into his last Pokemon Drapion, 
I get hit with a wicked blow but survive and my Hydra Pump is just enough to finish this battle and give me my 6th gym badge. Now we go to Cinnabar Island to take on Mei and this fight was actually pretty easy. Since I did actually add Toxapex to my team now, who was able to take down her first Pokemon Solrock, then I switched in Pelipper to set up the rain, then I went into Swampert and I just Earthquake the Manectric, Ice Punch the Breloom, Earthquake the Relicanth, I sponged the Flygon, then went into Pelipper to set up the rain again as the Blaziken killed me, then switched back into Swampert and killed the Blaziken with a Liquidation to win against Mei. And with that rival battle out of the way, we decided to head on over to Blaine, which should also be very easy since it's fire versus water. He starts off with his Torkoal and I lead off with my Toxapex, but I immediately switch into Pelipper to set up the rain. After that I try to go for a Hydro Pump, but he switches into Sun Flora and I miss. So I go for two Hurricanes to take it out, he then sends in Cinderace and misses his attack so my Hydro Pump is going to take it out here. I then switch because I need this Pelipper to set up more rain later on as he goes into Typhlosion. So I go into Lapras because this Typhlosion can't touch my Lapras and my Hydro Pump is going to take him down from full health. His Mega Charizard Y is going to come in, I hit one more Hydro Pump before going down to two Dragon Pulses though, and he's also set up the Drought. So I try to go into Pico to set up the Rain again, but I didn't calculate the Stealth Rocks and my Pico can't even set up the Drizzle because of course the Stealth Rocks takes me out. So I go into Swampert so that he would go for Solar Beam and then switch into Mantine who takes it like a champ but it was a critical hit though. I hit a couple of moves but Mantine does go down in the end sadly enough. But King can then come in and take down his Charizard as he then sends in Venusaur but I'm locked into Aqua Fang by my Choice Band so I have to switch into Toxapex here. Toxapex goes down rather quickly by some Giga Drain so I switch back into Gyarados and two more Ice Fangs are going to take down this mighty beast. His last Pokemon is his Torkoal again so I go into Swamp Bird, Mega Evolve and an Earthquake is going to give us our 7th Gym Badge. And normally we could just go to the final gym now, but first we have to go to Cerulean Cave to stop Giovanni together with Lance because he just caught Mewtwo and that's not good for the world, so let's stop him. I got to pick three Pokemon, so I went with Pico, Swampert and my Gyarados. And Lance fights with his Dragapult. Dialga and Salamans, Mega Salamans actually. The battle starts off with Tapu Lele and Scrafty versus our Drizzle, Pelipper and Dragapult. I immediately switch into my Swampert and get hit by a knockoff, but the next turn I Mega Evolve and hit a Liquidation on the Scrafty. It doesn't quite do enough damage, so the turn after I decide to go on to Tapu Lele and take that thing down with a Liquidation as well. He then sends in Tyranitar, which also gets destroyed by Liquidation. And then he sends in Celesteela, which is able to tank a Liquidation like a boss and take down my Swampert. So I go into Pelipper, try to hit a Hurricane on the Scrafty, but I already got taken out by the Celesteela once again. But Dragapult was able to hit a Phantom Force on the Celesteela though. I then went into Gyarados and was able to take down the Scrafty and the Celesteel with Aqua Fang and Dragon Darts from Dragapult. And his last two Pokemon are Excadrill and Mega Mewtwo Y. Gyarados is able to hit one more Aqua Fang on the Excadrill before going down. But the Excadrill had a Focus Sash, but that doesn't mean that Dragapult isn't going to take him down with a Phantom Force. But Dragapult gets taken down by Mewtwo, so he sends in his Mega Salamance who is able to take down Mega Mewtwo Y with some double edges. And just like that, me and the champion defeated Giovanni. After that we have a little bit of a chat with all of the admins and Giovanni himself about his son Silver. We get the Salamance site and head on over to the 8th gym which in this game is led by Claire. And Claire starts off with an Aerodactyl. So my leading Pokemon is going to be Lapras. I go for the Hydro Pump, but I miss. And he sets up some Stealth Rocks. I then go for another Hydro Pump as he misses his move, and then, then finish it off with Ice Shard Priority. Naganadal is then going to come out, so I go into my beast of a Pokemon, Mantine. She goes for a Draco Meteor, and it leaves me with a lot of HP remaining, so I go for a Ice Beam, and manage to get the Freeze off. Because of this I can just go for one more Ice Beam and take out the Naganettle as she goes into Magirna. So next turn I just let my Mantine go down so I can safely switch in Blastoise to go for a Rapid Spin and get rid of the Stealth Rocks. I then go for two Hydro Pumps as I hang on with 5 HP from her two 
Fleur Cannons, and I managed to take out the Magirna. The next Pokemon that comes out is Dragonite, which is of course going to finish off Blastoise with extreme speed, so I go into Lapras, two Dragon Pulses, is going to take out this Dragonite because my second one was a critical hit, so we've been pretty lucky in this battle so far. And the next Pokemon is Mega Duraludon, so I stay in and hit a couple of moves, but I easily get taken out by some Draco Meteors after that. So I have to switch in Pelipper here to set up the rain again, go down to another Draco Meteor, Swampert now comes in, I Mega Evolve and take this thing down with Earthquake. The last Pokemon is Dracovish and my Swampert is easily going to come out on top here with two more Earthquakes, gaining our last Gym Badge and now being able to move on to our rival battles. We have two more rival battles before the league, the first one is with Thor. And his first Pokemon is going to be a Staraptor as I lead off with a Wall Raid, which I just got and it immediately just gets destroyed by a close combat, doesn't even survive it. So I go into the Gyarados to try and intimidate the Staraptor and go for the Ice Fang, but he switches into Electivire. I'm predicting an Electric-type move here, so I go into Swampert. And my Earthquake is actually enough to take it down from here. But of course not before we get hit by a close combat. Then he sends in his Kartana, so I decide to go into Gyarados to once again intimidate it, but he gets a critical hit with Leaf Blade, taking me down from full health. So Pico can come in to set up the rain again and kill this Kartana with a Hurricane as he sends in Staraptor again. So I try to roost up but I get destroyed by a Brave Bird and I then send in my Swamper to try and go for the Ice Punch but he switches into Azumarill which I then take down with Earthquake after that. His Staraptor then comes in once again, I Ice Punch it, but because of the Intimidate, it doesn't kill and I get taken out. So I switch in Lapras, but luckily the Brave Bird, Recoil Damage also took it out, so he has to go into Darmanitan. My Lapras is able to overpower it with a Hydro Pump, as he then goes into his last Pokemon, Mega Venusaur. And of course that thing is going to take out my Lapras, I go into Mantine, but I get put to sleep. But in the end, my Air Slashes are enough to take it down and I was only left with one HP. So after scraping by in this battle, it's time to go to the final rival battle with Brendan before we can go to the Elite Four. He starts off with a flippin' Deoxys attack form. So my lead Pokemon was Walrein, which was probably the worst Pokemon I could have led with, and I immediately got destroyed by Super Power. So I switch in Gyarados and am able to hit one more move, but he has a Focus Sash. So in order to keep my Gyarados alive, I decided to switch out into Lapras and go for the Ice Shard. But he switched into his Zapdos, Galarian Zapdos. So I decided to switch in Pico and set up some rain, but he went down to two Brave Birds rather quickly as I then switched in my Swampert. I Mega Evolved and proceeded to one-shot Zapdos, Mega Sceptile and then the Deoxys with Ice Punches. His Jiraji got destroyed by Earthquake, his Landorus by Liquidation and finally his Huntail was able to take an Earthquake and finally finish off my Swampert. So I went into Lapras and the Draco Meteor was able to finish off this Huntail, which means that we have finally completed all of the battles before the Elite Four. So let's start off with Lorelei. This is the team that I decided to take with me into the entirety of the Elite Four. It's a Suicune, Lantern, Pelipper, Lapras, Swampert and Gyarados. In the first fight against Lorelei, I wanted to face her water team and that's exactly what I did. I led off with my Swampert and my Gyarados so that I could intimidate her Poliwrath. Luckily she also led with Politoed which sets up a Drizzle so my Swift Swim Swampert is going to go and outspeed almost everything on her team. I can just safely go for Earthquakes here because Gyarados is part flying type and I actually did some very nice damage against both of her Pokemon. And I set up a Dragon Dance with Gyarados as well. I then went for another Earthquake and set up a one more Dragon Dance with my Gyarados to take down both of her Pokemon as he sent in her Primal Kyogre and her own Mega Swampert, which is going to be not so good for me to deal with. My Gyarados was able to hit a Crunch on the Kyogre and do some very decent damage, but a liquidation of her Swampert killed me. Luckily my Earthquake was enough to take down the Kyogre and do some decent damage on Swampert as well. So then my Pico came in and she sent out her Kingdra. After going for an Earthquake I got taken out by a Liquidation and my Pelipper took down the Kingdra with Hurricane. So I swapped in Suicune and she swapped in Dracovish. And then I just spammed Ice Beam and Hurricane to take down both of her Pokemon and win our first Elite Four member battle. So let's move on to the second one, Bruno. He leads off with an Urshifu, so I'm going to lead off with Lantern because this thing is a water fighting type. So my Parabolic Charge is going to do a lot of damage and with two of them I can take 
it out. But I also took a lot of damage from close combat. He then went into Conkelder, who took down Lantern, and I went into my Pelipper. I went for a Hurricane, which did decent damage, but after that he switched into his Terrakion, who took it a little bit better. So I decided to go into Suicune and set up a Calm Mind. After that I just went for the rest Sleep Talk, as he switched out into Scizor, which took an Ice Beam very well, and then switched into Zacian, which took down my Suicune with a single close combat. So I went back into Pico to set up the Reign again and try to go for a Roost, but I get destroyed by a Crunch and a Behemoth Bash. So I decide to switch in my Mega Swampert, and with Swift Swim I'm outspeeding the Zacian and killing it with Earthquake. I also one-shot the Scizor with Liquidation, the Conkelder, and the Terrakion. But after the Terrakion I only had 7 HP left and he went into his final Pokemon Mega Lucario which destroyed me with Aura Sphere. So King had to come in and two more Aqua Fangs later and Lucario was down. And so the next person we had to take on was Agatha which starts off with a Gengar so I lead off with Lantern once again. As she went for a Taunt I went for Parabolic Charge but it turns out this thing is actually a Zoroark. But as I try to go for another one, she switches in Aegis Slash, so I go for a Parabolic Charge on that and then spam Hydro Pump, but it decides to Toxic me and also switches between King Shield and Shadow Ball to attack me. And so eventually with that combo, my Lantern falls. So my Mega Swampert once again has to come in and Earthquake it to take it down as she goes into a Spectrier. I could have swapped out here into Pelipper, but I decided to stay in and just go for the Earthquake and somehow this managed to one-shot it as she then goes into Marshadow. For Marshadow, I did decide to go into Pico and go for some Hydro Pumps and I have no idea why I did not go for Hurricane, but I managed to come out on top somehow because a Spectral Thief did not take me out since I'm max defense. A Sil Valley then came out, so I switched into my Gyarados and went for an Aqua Fang for some reason, not for Crunch. Crunch would have done more. And so my Gyarados gets destroyed by a couple of multi attacks. So my Lapras had to come in, but sadly enough, I missed two of my three Hydro Pumps, so I also went down to some multi attacks. Pico came in once again to try and do something, but he also got taken out by multi attack, so Mega Swampert had to come in and once again sweep the rest of her team with liquidation and earthquakes. Sil Valley, Zoroark, and Gengar, all three couldn't stand up to the speed of my bulky boy. So two more battles to go, the next one is with Lance the Dragon Master. And he actually has Dragon type Pokemon in this game, starting off with Garchomp versus my Lantern, so one of the worst matchups ever. But I just let my Lantern go down to an Earthquake and switched in Gyarados to go for the Ice Fang as he set up some Stealth Rocks. The Ice Fang sadly enough does not kill but he misses his move next turn and I can go for another one to take him down. His next Pokemon was Draco Zolt, so I switched in Swampert predicting an electric type move and I was right. So I Mega Evolved and tried to go for the Earthquake but he switched in Dragonite predicting my move as well. So he set up a Dragon Dance and tanked my Ice Sponge because of his Berry, then hit me with a dual Wing Beat but it wasn't enough to take me down so one more Ice Sponge is taking down this Dragonite. He then went into Draco Zolt again and I once again got lucky because he missed his move again otherwise we probably would have fainted here but my Earthquake is taking him down in one shot again. He then sent out his Melmetal, which is a weird looking dragon type. So my Pico had to come in as he went for Earthquake. Nice prediction there for me. Definitely meant to do that. I went for a Hydro Pump before going down to Thunder Punch. So my Swampert had to come in and finish this thing off with Earthquake. And the next Pokemon he has is a Primal Dialga. And my Earthquake is super effective, but it barely does anything. So I get taken out by a Roar of Time. So I went into Lapras, hit a Draco Meteor and got swapped out because of Roar of Time? I don't think that's how it works normally. So my Suicune came in, I went for a Calm Mind but once again got dragged out by Roar of Time, switched back into Lapras, hit one more Draco Meteor before going down by another Roar of Time as he only has a little bit of HP remaining. So my Gyarados' Ice Fang can take it out from this range as he then goes into his last Pokemon Mega Salamence who takes me down with Double Edge but Suicune can come in and sweep it up with an Ice Beam. And with this difficult battle we have defeated Lance the Dragon Man so we now have to move on to the final battle against Thor. The champion starts off with an Ultra Beast, Feramosa, and I'm definitely not a fan of Ultra Beasts. So my Lapras is squashing this bug with a Hydro Pump and an Ice Shard after I got hit with a close combat. Next to that is Mega Metagross, who of course is going to take me down with a Zen Headbutt rather easily. So my Gyarados had to come in to lower its attack with my Intimidate and then finish it off with two more Earthquakes. 
as I was able to tank two Zen headbutts with only a little bit of HP remaining. His Yveltal would then come out which is normally a very big threat but my Ice Fang was able to freeze it and two more Ice Fangs later and this Yveltal is down and out. Then he finally sent in his Galarian Darmanitan which is able to take down my Gyarados with an Icicle Crash. So I swap in Pico to set up the rain but I miss both of my moves so my Pico also goes down to two Icicle Crash. Uzz. Swampert then has to once again come in and Earthquake the Darmanitan to take him down. The next Pokemon is Primal Groudon. So there goes my rain. But my Mega Swampert still outspeeds and two Earthquakes is still enough to take this big beast down. But I did get hit with a Pressable Blades. The last Pokemon on the list is Eternatus, which is of course going to take me out with a Dynamax Cannon. So I send in my Lantern, go for the Thunder Wave and Confuse Ray so that it hit itself a couple of times in its confusion, then start spamming Parabolic Charge until he eventually snaps out of his confusion, I confuse him again, and then a couple more Parabolic Charges is able to take down the Eternatus and win us the battle against Thor. You know what that means? That means that we finally defeated Pokemon Radical Red. So many people wanted me to finally defeat this game, and by doing a lot of research about the game itself and building a somewhat competitive team, then if you just use all of the items and EV training things that get given to you, this game really isn't that hard to beat. And I want to say that it's actually very fun to play. You guys only saw one of each battle that I did, but some battles I had to attempt over 30 times easily, but this video was already way too long, and I really couldn't add in even more attempts at some battles, because this video would have easily been over an hour if I did that. Anyway, if you would like me to do another monotype challenge in this game, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do so, but these videos do take a long amount of time to make, so giving me a like would really be appreciated. And with that out of the way, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters as always, if you want to support me yourself, the links are in the description. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.